Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Fullman Adventure Club and today we're going to be going over this tank monitoring system. This is by Level Guard. it's a Tank Monitor 200. Now what's really great about this is that the sensors to monitor your tank levels actually just stick to the outside of the tank. This is fantastic because it means you don't have to drill into your tank to put those spin-in sensors uh, that you would find on say RV black tanks. Um, now I'm going to be installing this on an outdoor 1500 gallon uh, fresh water tank that I use for my cabin here. In order to check that thing, uh, in the past I would have to go out there, go uphill in the snow, the rain, whatever, stand on slippery logs, open up the top of the frozen tank lid, and uh, shine my flashlight in there to visually check the level of water I had in the tank. And that was no fun at all. So with this guy now I just push a button in my bathroom and I automatically know exactly how much water is in my tank. So I'm absolutely loving this thing. Um, it's very, very easy to install. And another really cool thing that I like about it is the fact that the sensors just stick to the outside of the tank. So for RV applications, your black tank, sometimes you'll dump your black tank, you'll go inside, you'll check your monitor and it still says full or half. And it's because you have debris or something caught on the inside sensors that's giving you a false reading. And that is very irritating. Mine is notorious for it. And so I'm going to be replacing mine with this for sure because this will eliminate false readings. If there's liquid in the tank, it'll tell you. If there's no liquid in the tank, it'll tell you. So that's going to be a really cool video that I will do very soon. But today we're just hooking it up to the water tank here for my cabin. So we're going to run the line and drill the hole and mount the, uh, the uh, monitor panel. And I will show you guys how to do that. I've been loving it so far. Um, I'm going to tell you two things that you need to know if you're interested in buying one of these. Number one is it does not come with a wire to run from the tank to the monitor panel. It has a little wiring harness and it has the sensors and that's it. So you have to buy your own wire. It recommends 12 gauge. I bought a hundred foot of that off of uh, Amazon. And also the second thing is it does require a 12 volt power supply for the control panel. In an RV situation, this is no big deal. You hook it into the battery and the 12 volt system and boom, you're good to go. But a residential setup like this, you need to create some 12 volt power and at least one amp. So what I did is I bought a little adapter off Amazon for like seven bucks and it produces 12 volts at two amps. So that's perfect. So I cut the end off that and plugged it in and we're good to go. So I'll put a link to all three of these things down in the, in the description below in case you want to check them out. In the meantime, let's jump right into installing this guy. Very easy. And uh, we'll show you how it works. Okay, so as far as what's in the box, you have your instruction manual, your wiring diagram, your control panel with three buttons on this particular model, fresh water, gray water, black tank, and you have your little connection port in the back that does go to a wiring harness that is already in the bathroom because I started installing it. And then you have your three pack of triple sensors and these spread out to a maximum length of about this far. Um, and other than that, we're gonna jump right into kind of uh, going into the bathroom to see what we have going on. I will throw a picture of the wiring diagram up for everybody. You can see that the gray wire is attached to the black white stripe. The green wire is attached to the black wire on your sensor pad. And then you have your uh, positive and negative power supply. In here in the bathroom, uh, it also does come with a fuse that goes in line with your power supply, as you saw right there. So it's just a little inline red fuse. And to cut out the hole, you wanna make sure that you measure the green circuit board, not the entire box, because you wanna make sure you have enough room to put some screws in there. Um, and basically what I did is I just kind of marked it out with a level a little bit, uh, right where I wanted it. And I used a big, nice size drill bit to go inside the lines on all four corners. And then I used a reciprocating saw to just go ahead and cut that out with a little skill saw. You can use any kind of saw you want. And this is a long uh, spade bit right here. So that's a long drill bit that you can use to get through the wire that's usually used by electricians. I ran through my wire and I tied a knot in it just to make sure it's not gonna get pulled out um, from the outside if anything snags it. And I attached the wires just real crudely for now with electrical tape. I'm gonna come back and use butt connectors or shrink wrap, shrink, shrink wrap tubing rather uh, to connect those a little later. And there's another look at the display panel. And what we're going to do now is that now that we have the tank wires hooked up, that's the red and the black wires going through the wall. We're also going to need to connect our power source. And since we're inside a house, we have this AC adapter that puts out 12 volts at two amps. And I cut off the little adapter end that came with that black adapter so that I have two wires exposed. The black is the negative and the red is the positive. So we're going to connect those to the black and red uh, wires on the wiring harness. Not 
including our red um, fuse right there. Don't forget to put your fuse in for a little added protection. And this is just a test. I will come back and redo these connections. And so now we're pretty much wired up and ready to go. Um, we're gonna go ahead and connect our circuit panel here. We do not have power run to the unit yet, so that's just fine. I cut a little notch at the top of my hole so the power wire can kind of poke out the top, and I'll run that to a power outlet. You can make sure it's kind of leveled up. We're just gonna throw a couple of screws in it just so it's kind of mounted on the wall, and we'll do our testing. And then I can very easily pull those out and uh, you know connect everything with whatever connectors I want and put in the other two screws. But for the sake of expediency on the video, we're just gonna throw a couple of screws in there so it's mounted to the wall. And now we're out to the tank. Now on this particular tank, it does have a little divot near the bottom. And I can see that from the top of the tank with a flashlight, but you can also use a tape measure and run it down into the tank. And then you'll know exactly how tall it is. And you can go from there. I have a little pipe that sticks up from the bottom so we don't pull it directly off the bottom of the tank. And I also wanna have a couple of days of water left. So I'm gonna give myself that much room and put the sensor right up top above that crease. You're gonna to wanna to clean the area with some 99% isopropyl alcohol. And we're gonna do that. We're just gonna rub it really well, make sure we get any kind of dirt, mud, debris off of there. And then the alcohol is gonna evaporate very, very quickly. That's why you use alcohol. So once that alcohol dries, we're gonna go ahead and stick on our sensor. So let me get those ready. And you pull off the backing. You can also tape these on if you wanna test it but I know right where I want them, so I pulled off the triple M tape backing, and I'm gonna stick that on there and put these up just about as high as the wire will allow me to go. I do not believe you can add extra wire to this length uh, because I think they're set at their maximum distance there, is my understanding. So you're gonna use the alcohol again, pull off the triple M backing tape, and go ahead and stick that guy right there, and that's gonna be our halfway mark. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the third pad and we're all set up. So above that third one is gonna be full and then below it is gonna be, you know, three quarters, below the, you know, half, third, etc. And now what we're gonna do is I cut off the little plug that came with the sensors because I don't have a female version of that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and splice these together with some heat shrink tubing. And the heat shrink tubing outside is just gonna kind of make sure that water is not getting into the wires as much, just a real quick job. I'm gonna use a Bic lighter just to <laughs> secure these. I'm doing everything pretty quick so we can test this guy out. And I'll probably come back and maybe add some electrical tape and actually mount the wire. And uh, you, you might wanna add some conduit to protect your wiring from the sun and the elements. Or you can get uh, variable wire, but this is not. So I'll probably have to come back and add some conduit or something just to kind of help protect it and from you know the sun and now boom you can see we plugged the guy in to ac power and now that it, it is showing above a third and that's because that's right where the water level is is above that bottom sensor and so that's working fantastic and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go out and basically fill up the tank and see if it works we're going to fill it all the way up and we should get a full reading right here so here we are we're full and boom so how awesome is that so it's been about two months since I've been using this thing and I gotta say I absolutely love this upgrade for my cabin. It is so much more convenient to actually be able to just push a button and check the tank level without having to go outside. I'm also very excited to put this on the black tank of my RV so that I don't have any more false readings ever. So that's gonna be a really cool video as well. Make sure you subscribe if you wanna see that and hit the little bell notification so you actually get notified when I do new videos. Um, this particular model has three tanks with three sets of sensors. I believe they do have different models where you can get one, two, three, or four uh, sets of sensors and buttons. And uh, mine has three, which is gonna be great even for my house application because when I add tanks for rainwater collection later, I'll just be able to run some wire and throw on more sensors. So this is really cool. I've been really enjoying it. I will put a link to everything I did for this in the description below so you can pick those up on Amazon if you're interested. And I think that about wraps it up very, very cool. I'll do some more testing with it when I install it in the RV. My name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club. I hope this helped you out. If it did, please like, share, subscribe. That really helps me out. And until the next video, thank you so much for watching and happy camping.